What's going on, guys? It's me, Chris. Here to get my uh, long overdue, not long overdue, but overdue afterthoughts on the uh, HBO's boxing card this weekend: Berto Urango and Angulo Cintron. Um, I never do fights. Usually, ever do fight videos after the fights. You know, I usually wait till the next day. And unfortunately, yesterday I had to go to a wedding and stuff. So by the time I got home, I was just too tired to deal with it. And I really wasn't gonna make a video to be honest, because you know I didn't get too much feedback on the uh, predictions. But you know, one of my boys on here, one of my subscribers, uh, J. Paul Thomas, shouts out. Um, he predicted Cintron. I, he asked me if I was gonna do after that video. I told him I would. So you know, if nothing else, I feel I owe him an explanation. You know, and you know credit for picking Cintron in the fight. Plus, I didn't want people to think I was ducking, you know, because I picked Angulo and he lost, you know. That's not my style, you know. If a guy loses, whatever, you know. I don't really have a stake in it, so I don't care if I get a prediction wrong or not, to be honest. Um, anyways, moving on to the fights themselves. Angulo versus Cintron, first off. Um, gotta say, I was very surprised, but not shocked by outcome, but surprised. You know, I thought if Cintron was going to win this fight, he'd win by uh, catching Angulo with something, hurting him and finishing him off. But I really thought Angulo was going to just, you know, wear Cintron down much like uh, Antonio Margarita did and stop him late. However, obviously that wasn't the case as everybody just saw happen. Cintron boxed really, probably the best boxing I've ever seen him do. You know, he's won fights before with his power and he's won, you know, just kind of gutting the fights out. Well, maybe not gutting them out, maybe that's not the best word, but um, he's just won on power, brute force for the most part. But this was a fight that he won on technique for the most part. You know, he stayed in the middle of the ring. He used his jab effectively, which he hadn't done a lot in the past. Um, just really outboxed Angulo. Angulo just had no answers. Angulo was very one-dimensional in this fight. And, Angulo, and uh, Cintron exploded that. You know, just used the jab, landed a lot of uh, clean, um, I believe it was right hand Cintron was throwing. I believe he's a uh, right handed, not a southpaw fighter. And, you know, Angulo, you know, the guy could take a serious shot. I give him credit for that, no doubt. And it's definitely persistent. He kept coming on. Um, thing is, I thought it looked like a, uh, the Margarito fight, but it wasn't, you know. Angulo just didn't throw a lot of, as many punches as Margarito did, and he just wasn't as effective applying his pressure. You know, uh, Margarito was just able to get Cintron to Cintron faster, and Angulo never was able to. You know, he definitely came on in certain rounds, I believe the fifth or sixth, and maybe the third or fourth. He was starting, it looked like he was starting to turn the tide, but um, Cintron was able to right the ship, so to speak, and, uh, you know, get things back in his favor. I thought it was a close fight by the end, to be honest. I had it a draw, but maybe that's just because I was biased. I don't know what it was, you know. But if either fighter won the fight, I'd definitely leave it with Cintron. And I don't think in any way it was a robbery, you know. So even though I thought it might have been a draw, I definitely, uh, I, you know, all in all, looking back, I guess Cintron probably did win the fight, you know, and got the decisions early. So, although late in the fight, you know, I thought he was going to fold, you know, and Galois put the pressure on. Cintron was tiring, um, as he has in the past. And Max Kellerman pointed something out. Um, similar that was pointed out in Jermaine Taylor's last fight against, um, who did he lose to? The Brit. Uh, the name slips my head off the top of my mind. But, um, but you know, they're not very, Taylor and Cintron, they're not very relaxed in the ring. And so the stress seems to overwhelm them and it seems to fatigue them more than the, you know, just as much as the fight itself. That's why they seem to tire late even though they're in great shape. So, it's a great observation by Kellerman and I agree with that. Um, and Cintron was definitely out of gas the last couple of rounds. It's definitely uh, holding a lot, you know, but not enough for a... He was able to survive. And um, one thing, another, one last thing. Angulo's corner going in the 12th round, they said, you got to go for the knockout. They kept on that throughout the fight. You're losing. Don't go to the body. I disagree. He was taking it to successfully to center onto the body. I think he should have went to the body in the final round. But his corner told him not to, and he didn't. You know, who's to say if it would have mattered? But I just think his corner gave bad instructions uh, throughout the fight for the most part. Anyways, credit to Central. He's going to get that rematch with Sergio Martinez next. Hopefully, you know, he could redeem himself because a lot of fans were, you know, including myself, were hard on him after that fight, the way it went. So hopefully, you know, he could redeem himself in that fight. As for Angulo, first loss, still a young fighter, only his 16th fight, I believe. So just a learning experience, you know. Win or lose, you know, I like seeing this fight, so I'm looking forward to see what he does next from here. Uh, moving on to the Andre Berto Juan Yurango fight. Uh, pretty much one as I saw. Before the fights even started, the first thing I noticed, and I knew it was going to be a good easy night for Andre Berto, I called uh, my boy 97 Rock after the fight and was telling him, ring size, really big ring, definitely beneficial to Berto as he's the faster fighter. He needed, he was going to use the ring. That was his game plan. And, you know, I just knew it was going to be beneficial for him, and it turned out to be the case. Not that Urongo was ever in the fight, to be honest. He was dominated from bell to bell. Um, I know that Urongo's a good fighter, and he was moving up. He was a champion, but... 
This fight was a mismatch from the outset. Um, I said in my predictions video and on the radio show leading up to this, um, Ronga was tailor-made for Berto, just based on style, speed, you know, all that stuff. And it proved to be the case. The only thing is, you know, Berto just, he just didn't give a performance. He did a great performance and dominated the fight, but it seemed like he could have done more. You know, Berto's got great skills, very talented fighter, but it just seems like there's something missing, something tangible. I can't quite put my finger on it yet, but, um, you know, we'll see. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. I'm not saying that he won't be a good fighter. He already is. He won't be a great fighter, but there just seems to be something missing. I don't know, something that's going to capture the public's attention. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. But um, he boxed effectively, you know. I do give him credit. He could have boxed the whole fight, but he did trade a few times, you know, and Urongo was able to get his shots in, but, you know, neither were able to really hurt each other. Those parts of the fight were really exciting, but for the most part, the fight wasn't the most exciting. It was a bit lackluster, just because it seems like Berto could have done a little bit more. But he did enough to win, you know, impressively, just not sensationally, in my opinion, my personal opinion, you know, for what that's worth. But, um, you know, the one thing is that kind of got on my nerves and frustrated with Berto is a couple times in the fight, a few times, he was making noises like, ah, ah, you know, little ad-libs or something, I don't know. It was kind of showboating, it kind of was just a little nuisance. And after the fight, he said it into the HBO cameras, you know, Urongo, go back to uh, Junior Welterweight, there's sharks up here. Well, yeah, that, that's true, but um, your people are the one that called Urongo for the fight. He wasn't asking for the fight, you know, so if you're going to say, you know, there's sharks at 147, let's see you fight some of those sharks, you know, let's see you go for Colazzo next. Or, you know, the loser of Claudio Cotto, you know, I'd like to see that. There's a lot of big dogs out there at welterweight, so if you're going to, you know, say that about Urongo, I want to see you fight some of the next, top welterweights next, starting with uh, Luis Colazzo in a rematch. Um, as for Urongo, to be honest, never been a fan of the guy, but he definitely gained my respect. He was outgunned the whole fight, but he never stopped trying. He kept trying to the final bell he threw. He was throwing punches. Never got, you know, I'm sure he was frustrated in there, but you couldn't tell. Never tried any dirty tactics or anything, you know. Didn't let his frustration show. Just kept marching forward the whole fight, taking punches and trying his best. And I always respect a fighter that does that, that gives his all, you know, from bell to bell. So credit to both guys. Pretty good night of fights. Not quite what I thought. You know, at least not as exciting as I thought or had hoped for, but overall a good show. So, just, you know, sorry about the lateness of the video, but better late than never, I suppose, right? Anyways, that's it for now. Probably be back with my, um, I think the next fight is, uh, the next big fight's Koto Plotty. So, I'll probably be back with those soon, but uh, until then, y'all, I'm out of here. Bye.